Hi guys and welcome to my channel Crime Time with me Charlotte. So today's case that I'm covering is an unsolved case here in the UK and um, that's why I am covering it. I wasn't actually aware of this story until I started looking for cases to cover that were unsolved in cold cases here um, and this one really popped out to me. So this is the case of Melanie Hall. Melanie Hall was 25 years old at the time of her disappearance in June 1996. She and some friends and her boyfriend went out to a nightclub in Bath and she was never seen again. In the June of 1996, it was a really warm summer here in the UK. It was also the football Euros, so everyone was absolutely buzzing. Melanie and her boyfriend Philip were attending a friend's barbecue. They were enjoying themselves so much at this barbecue in Bath that they didn't want the night to end. So Melanie and her boyfriend and friends went to a nightclub on the outskirts of Bath called Cadillacs. Melanie and her friends were having a great time and Philip, Melanie's boyfriend, went to the toilet. And when he came back, he saw Melanie dancing on the dance floor with another man. When he went to approach, the man actually kissed Melanie. So, of course, Philip stormed out. He went and got in his car and he sat and waited for Melanie to come out after him. Melanie, however, didn't run out after him. I don't know whether she wasn't aware that Philip saw what had happened or she just didn't care. Philip sat there and waited for Melanie to come out, but she didn't. So he drove off and he drove home without her. Back in the nightclub, the friends that were with Melanie said their goodbyes. At this time, obviously, Melanie wasn't even aware that Philip had left. So at this point, Melanie's friends leave the nightclub, leaving Melanie alone. The following day, which was a Sunday, her parents tried to make contact with her, but they weren't getting any answers. But they were aware that she was at her boyfriend's house in Bath, so they didn't think really too much of it. However, when it came to the Monday, and Melanie still hadn't made contact, nor had she turned up for work, they knew something was wrong. Obviously, they didn't want to be too hasty, so they thought, right, we're going to wait till 8 o'clock Monday night, and if we don't hear or see her, we know something is wrong. And sadly, no, no contact was made from Melanie, so this is when they called the police to report Melanie as missing. Four days after Melanie's disappearance, the police launched an intensive search for her. They were handing out flyers to people in the Bath area that could have been out that night, and they were also doing intensive searches in bushes, shrubbery, woodlands, everywhere. From the nightclub to where her boyfriend lived, and from the nightclub to where her mum and dad lived, which was actually quite a journey if she did it by foot. Um, but that was a theory that potentially Melanie realised that she was by herself and walked to one of the houses. Melanie's stuff was at Philip's house, so the thought was that, did she go back to Philip's? because her stuff was there. The police checked the CCTV at the nightclub, but it didn't bring up anything to show what happened to Melanie. They also interviewed 400 people that attended the nightclub that night, out of 700 people, um, and no one really had any information about Melanie, which I can kind of get, you're on a night out, you're drunk, you're dancing, you don't really pay much attention to what everybody else is doing. Of course, with the situation on the dance floor, with the kiss and Melanie and Philip, Philip did become the police's number one suspect because also Melanie was meant to stay there that night, but there was literally nothing that tied Philip to the disappearance of Melanie and he was cleared. The police did a public appeal to anyone that might have any information about Melanie the night of her disappearance and two witnesses did come forward. One witness said that they saw someone matching Melanie's description sitting in a bar with another man. The other witness said that they were walking to a taxi and they saw a lady matching Melanie's description again um, arguing with a man outside. This for the police obviously was two great leads however it didn't help find Melanie and because of this Melanie's case actually went cold. On the 17th of November 2004 Melanie was actually declared dead in absent which must have been really hard for the family not having any answers nor a body. In October 2009 a bag of remains were found including a skull. 
These were found by workmen clearing the grass area of rubbish on the M5 near Gloucestershire. The remains were wrapped in black bin bags and tied around with a blue rope. The police jumped straight into investigating the scene and trying to find out the identity of this body. They knew straight away that this body was of a female. So this is when they started to look through who it could potentially be. In, in with the bag of the remains, they found a gold ring that had like a crest um, engraving pattern on it. When the police spoke to Melanie's parents about possibly these remains could be Melanie, they told her parents about this gold ring and they knew straight away it was Melanie, as this ring was given to Melanie by her grandmother. When they carried out the post-mortem, it showed that Melanie most likely died the night she disappeared in 1996. Melanie was killed by blunt force trauma and what she went through the night of her death is absolutely brutal. She had a broken jaw, a broken cheek and a fractured skull. This was literally an aggressive murder. What baffled police most about finding Melanie by the side of the M5 near Gloucestershire is it's actually nowhere near Bath. So someone must have known that kind of area on the M5. And it's busy. It's one of the busiest interchanges in the UK. So how did someone get out of a car on a busy road and manage to dump a body without being detected? Again, they checked CCTV to see if there was anything on the overheads, on the roads, um, but nothing brought up showing anyone disposing of a body. So near Melanie's body, they were obviously looking for things that could give them a profile of who did this. They actually found a set of Ford keys. I don't know if this was just a coincidence because I don't know why someone would leave a set of Ford keys next to Melanie's body. Um, but this is what the police went with. And this is when the police did a national appeal now um, on Crime Watch, which was a TV program here in the UK. And I used to love Crime Watch. It used to be like the thing to watch, but it sounds really sad. So they made an appeal to anyone who could potentially know the owner of these Ford keys or if anyone they know if anyone has lost a set of Ford keys. But still, no one was coming forward with any information about the murder of Melanie and what it had been 13 years now since the time of her disappearance and to the time that she was found. That's a long period of time to keep a secret. So the police went national with trying to find a suspect for Melanie's murder. This is when they looked into murderers in the UK that had killed in a similar way. So one person that they came across was Christopher Holloway. If you're not aware of who Christopher is, he would literally go out on a night out and looking for vulnerable women, he would murder them and then dump them by the side of a road. Like Melanie was, she was dumped by the side of the road. They interrogated, interviewed Christopher, but there was literally nothing tying him to the crime. The second suspect that they had was Levi Belfield. <sighs> so he is one of the UK's disgustingest people ever. There's many, but he is one. Um, and he would do the same thing, kill women, and he would, by blunt force trauma, and he hated blonde women, which is really bizarre. His ex-wife said that he would go through magazines just like scribbling over blonde women's faces and Melanie was blonde. Levi was nowhere near Bath the night that she was murdered. I believe that he was actually already in prison. So both of those were completely rolled out. So investigators went back to the drawing board and the blue rope, they remember the blue rope around Melanie's body had been tested for DNA back in 1996, but you know, we're 13 years on now and the advances in DNA testing has, progressed so much so they wanted to retest the blue rope for DNA. Sadly the DNA that they found on the rope was too small to get a match to anybody on the system. The police released an effect of the man that remember the witnesses said were with Melanie and this is the picture that they came up with. I'm going to keep that on the screen for quite a long time so people can take a good look at it because Melanie's case is still unsolved. And someone must know something. The police believe that the guy that killed Melanie was definitely from the Bath, Somerset area or has ties to Bath. The police believe that Melanie went willingly with this man because 
it was a busy night. You know, England were actually playing football that night. So the pubs and bars and towns were absolutely buzzing. No one reported hearing a woman screaming. No one reported a woman being forced into a car. So people, so the police really believe that Melanie either knew this person or felt comfortable with this person. To this day, there has been no new leads and this case is still unsolved. The police have not given up. No way have they given up. And they want to solve Melanie's murder. I will put all the information down below also with a link to the eFit picture. And I will also pop it on my Instagram so you can see it there. But that is it from today, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to be with me and hear Melanie's story. I will see you again very soon. Thank you. Bye.